Hello! Hello, Hi, hello! So today we are talking about decluttering again. I went over <laughs> to my friend's house. This is going to be a several months long, long project. Um, but I went over to my friend's house and so I thought I'd show you guys where we are with this project. All right. Here is the before of the craft room. Now, we started on her living room. But what we quickly discovered was that a lot of the stuff that was in the living room needed to go into the craft room. And then we discovered a lot of the stuff that was in the craft room needed to go into the attic. So we kind of had this little problem where we were having to clean out multiple places at once to get stuff moved. So here is her craft room office. And this is where we started. Could not, I mean, barely open the door. You can see it was pretty full in there. And so in the meantime, if you guys remember, we got a little bit out. She said that she needed a new desk. So I went to the ReStore yesterday and I found this desk here for $75. And mm. everything was working really good. Although today I will tell you we were putting it together and um, we uh, discovered... I don't know if it was in the transportation between, because it was working at the restore. So I don't know in between the transportation or what the drawer sliders broke. So we've got to go get new drawer sliders and put those on the drawer. But otherwise it fit in there perfectly. And so the boys assembled that for us. Now here's how it looked before this morning. So we got a huge chunk cleared out day before yesterday. You can see there was still some left. We just couldn't get it all done quite. And so we had some left to do and to go through. So we spent about an hour and a half this morning, maybe two hours going through and finishing the piles on the desks and the tables, going through the file cabinets. And then I went up to take a look at the attic just to assess the situation. The situation is pretty bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that didn't take much assessing, I don't think. You could see in half a glance. <laughs> so what we did was we put the boys, the kids, because there was one girl, we put the kids on at least just getting the trash and the old toys out of the attic that they didn't want. Uh, the young son, he had just thrown all his old toys in there and he's like, mom, I really don't want any of these toys. She's like, dump it. So he did a great job getting through and dumping as much as he could, but this is how it looked before. And so it was quite a bit in there that they needed to get go through and that's actually a really large space i was gonna say there's a lot of is that light coming in yeah there? at the end like where really the window nice. is there's a whole nother room the size of a bedroom wow that's a nice there. space in mm -hmm. so they're talking about possibly finishing the attic and putting in a bathroom for him down mm -hmm. there possibly so this attic is huge all right, so you can see Jack's here finishing putting in the desk. We got the closet almost cleared out, not quite. This is about halfway through. We were still going wow, through some of the books. Good. And this was about the halfway point today and got the desk cleared off, the new desk put in. And this is where we ended up after everything was all cleared off. The new desk is put in. Now these two file cabinets are going to go in the attic and the table on the far right is going to go in the attic but we have nowhere else to put them until we can get the attic clear to go in there. Now you will notice a trash can and that white basket next to the trash can. What is that? Immediately, immediately, I made a mail place for them because that's something that never ends. So the trash can is right there. The mail basket is right there. The son picks up the mail. His uh, backpack and shoes are just two feet from there around the corner. So he can just set the mail in the basket, throw away what's trash, like the, you know, uh, weekly newspaper we always get, stuff like that. Throw away what he knows is trash and put the rest in the basket for mom. And now mom's mail is all together. It's all together and she won't lose it anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So this is how we ended up today, the end of the day with the craft room. Remember, we couldn't even walk into it. And this is how it looked at the end of the day. Now we got everything put into the closet. There were instruments all over the house. And in that closet, there's about 10 or 15 different instruments. I know the feeling. I remember the feeling. <laughs> but at least was, they're not pianos. I was trying not to have post-traumatic <laughs> issues. I was working on it. But we got the instruments all put in there and got her desk stuff loaded. Now, that one box, we just did not have time to finish going through. But she's going to work on uh, that one box and a little bit of that um, tonight while we're gone. And this is how it looked in the end. Now, over here on the other side is where her son is going to put his desk, but a new desk is coming. So we're going to wait until it gets here in a few days, put his desk there. And then that over there is going to be his fly, fly, uh, or not fly tying. Well, yeah, probably fly tying too, but he does fly tying and leather work. And so all those drawers are going to be for him to put his stuff mm -hmm. in. And like Jack has all these, he's building a computer part. So we gave him our old roll top desk and he's using that for his project desk. And so it has all the cubbies to put all the different things in there mm -hmm. and get all those in there. All right. Post your comments and question and guys most, in the description, please. Most older kids need something like that, you know, yeah. and it helps them to enjoy their hobby more or whatever, if they have their own place in a, good desk or yep. whatever that they need in shelves to put yep. that stuff on. And it helps keep the stuff corralled yeah. for mom. Okay. Before we get to the rest guys, our dining on a dime cookbooks are on sale right now for our spring into savings sale. 50% off our eBooks, 35% off our print books. Start here. This is the second edition. The recipes are totally different, but they're easy recipes to get you in and out of the kitchen quickly with ingredients you already have on hand and that are cheap. Also our dining on a dime, gluten-free, dairy-free edition, and then our undated planner. This will help keep you organized. We have chore and cleaning and decluttering lists in our planner, 400 pages undated so that you can start now and not lose any days. Okay. We, we do have some cleaning lists in the cookbook too, in the back of the cookbook, how to clean yeah. the kitchen, how to clean the bathroom. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, guys, what did you think of the end? Type one if you loved it. Type two if, Tara, what did you do all day? <laughs> <laughs> I need some approval here. There better be a lot of ones, guys, do that for her and Jack. We're so sore. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up if you guys uh, like it. We need you to do all kinds of stuff to keep us motivated. Well, at least you don't have to go to the gym now or anything like no, that, you know? No, you do not. Let <laughs> me tell you, I can hardly move. That's an inexpensive way to, yeah. you know, get in shape. So. Oh, thanks, guys. See, everyone's cheering <laughs> me on. Good job. Okay. Uh, and my friend was working really hard, too. All yeah. right. So here's the end of the attic. <laughs> attic. And it really doesn't look like they made much room, but you can see there is a path now to walk. And so they really took a huge chunk out of the attic. I know it doesn't look like it, but they really did. So they were able to clear a path so that we could start walking in the attic and get it going. And then, um, okay, oops, that was the end there. Um, and then I think what we're going to do is tomorrow we're going to clear out the first part of the attic by the door where she wants to put her file cabinets so that she can access that as she finds the folders and all the genealogy papers and stuff she's wanting. That way she can just put them straight in there and not have to be rifling all over the house, um, you know, shuffling stuff from space to space. So we're hopefully going to get enough cleared out that we can get the file cabinets in there and the table and the Christmas tree. Um, I don't know. I'm hoping we can do that. We'll I see. I think you can. I think you so can. So that's our big hope is to get everything that's in the living room from the craft room in there. Now, I will say the reason why we started doing the craft room was because the kitchen table has a bunch of craft stuff and um, office. But her craft shelf is all full. 
her painting shelf is all full. So I don't know if that's going to go upstairs or if we're going to have to do more. I don't know. Space upstairs in the attic. I'm not quite sure. Okay, Mike, send me the comments and questions. Chrissy wants to know, so what do you do when your husband is a hoarder and won't even start to clutter? Well, mom's a professional at that one. <laughs> so my dad, mom's ex-husband, was, this is why I know so much about this, because my dad's family is hoarders. They are the, when it says hoarder, the definition Cooper is right there. I mean, sorry guys, I love you if you're watching, but <laughs> they are the definition of hoarder. So we know exactly what we're talking about. Go, go ahead. Oh, well, you know, it depends how dogmatic your husband is against wanting to do it. It was, I guess, from day one, even though Tara's dad was a hoarder, he didn't like a mess. He wanted things to be neat and clean. His mom, Grandma Cooper, was really neat yeah. and clean, you know. And so we kind of had a, a compromise where the house was always neat and clean. He yeah. didn't bring stuff into the house. And he really wasn't too, too bad while we were married. He had business stuff, but it was hard because we had a large business that we were doing in the house. So I don't know how much, some of his was hoarding, but it was more business stuff. You know, we had a hundred bass drum shells at one point that we had to store in the house. That's why Tara was traumatized by all the instruments. We had like 50 accordions, you know, and all this, that's not even the small instruments and the all that stuff. So he did pretty good uh, while I was a around, you know, and he just, he always tried to keep things straight for us. So we really didn't in our own house have it too bad. Now, after we, I left him and we moved to Colorado for that year, I've never seen anything go downhill so fast as what our house did while we were gone. And he was in it, it was by bad. himself. It was, well, it looked just like that. It was bad. To walk on the laundry room, you had to walk through the laundry room to get into the house and into the kitchen. We almost had to walk sideways to walk, have a path to walk into the kitchen. There was two refrigerators in there. We had two stoves in there. Uh, uh, he had sacks. I don't know how we got that much mail, but for the year we were gone in his office, it was paper sacks. The big paper sacks were stacked too deep in his office all over the floor, just with mail alone. He didn't pay any bills while we were gone. The only mail he looked opened up was letters from me and the kids. Otherwise everything went into these paper sacks. It was, it was really, was really bad. And so you guys are just going to have to really work it out as a well, married couple and compromise on some stuff maybe give him a man cave that he wants to hoard. He can fill that up and call it good, but not to move it into the rest of the house. Something like that. What were you gonna now I will say for in this situation, her husband was really bad and she was trying to keep up and she finally just got to the point where she you, just gave up. Yeah. But it's like I told her, this was not a stuff problem. This was a marriage problem. Yeah. That's and it's a big saying. marriage problem. And honestly, when it starts to get to this, point. This is dangerous. This is a husband not taking care of his wife, dangerous marriage problem. And that's where you have to get counseling. And if your husband is going to, if your husband is going to refuse to get counseling, that's when you're going to have to decide if you're going to stay or not, because this mm -hmm. is dangerous to your life. You cannot physically stay in this place and stay healthy. Yeah. That's what I was going to say is some of these situations like this, it's not, it's just the symptom yeah. of what the real illness or disease yeah. is. And as far as the marriage goes, uh, it happens a lot of times when men are, and, or wives, either one are very, uh, uh, what, they go into debt, you know, they're not, yeah. they don't compromise on the money situation. And one partner does one thing really, really bad and makes things mess up. You have got to get counseling on that and get it taken care of. You're trying to fix the wrong thing. You're trying to clean up and get organized and get rid of the clutter. And that's not the problem. It's like, it's like trying to get an alcoholic to stop drinking 
And so you hide all the bottles of liquor in the house thinking that that's going to solve the problem. And it won't. He, that person has to decide, is it my family that I want to keep, you know, and I, can, am I willing to go get help for that? So you have to take it very seriously. GS, you need to take it seriously. GS says, everyone, please remember true hoarding is a mental illness. It's not just clutter. No, it's not. A lot of times it can be a mental illness. But a lot of times it's just flat out being rebellious. Yeah. It is a rebellious spirit. Those people do not want to be told what to do. Mm -hmm. They are perfectly fine. They are perfectly capable of doing this. Mm -hmm. But because they don't want to be told what to do, they're not going to do it. And see, that, and that is totally different. It is not always just a mental illness. And let me tell you, about 50% of the people that I have run across, at least, maybe 75, it's a rebellious thing and not a mental illness thing. And it is because to show you the difference, my husband had total control for years and years and years over the hoarding thing. But in one year's time, when he start, fell into sin and started just doing the rebellion stuff, we came back and that's what we came back yeah. to. So that just right there shows you it's something that's controllable. It's something that you can fix and, and deal with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, another thing, we're getting really bad nowadays. Of everything's a mental illness and we're making excuses. And you've got to stop doing that because like a lot of people say, I'm OC, ODC, is that OCD? What, OCD. You know, I'm OCD. Well, OK, but okay. you can just deal with it. Now you figure out you're how ADD. you're going to fix it. Figure it out. How? What steps do I need to take so I can function as a responsible adult human being in my world? You don't just say, "Well, I, I'm this is the way I am." So you know, you just have to feel sorry for me and be a victim and do all this stuff. We just everything is right, and it makes me upset too because people that have really have the mental problem. And it's serious, which is probably only about 5%. So the other 95%, it isn't. Those people, they're not getting the real help. Uh, they're, they're, throwing, they're almost going by the wayside because all these other people that think they're victims are taken front and center and hollering about it and carrying on about it. You know, to me, real hoarders, like you say, they have the mental illness. They're not the ones hollering that, you know, I have a mental illness. They don't even hardly half the time realize they have one. Yeah. So Sonia says she loves volume one cookbook salad dressing recipes every week. We are trying out a new one. The lemon garlic recipe is our absolute favorite thus far. You know what? I need to make me some of that. That sounds really good. 35% <laughs> off our print books right now, guys, in the description below. Easy recipes that you can get in and out of the kitchen. Guys, everybody's buying all these fancy schmancy salad dressings for five to six dollars a bottle, and you can make the same thing at home for literally a quarter. Literally a quarter. And we have a lot of those things yeah. like that for scratch. In then the books. our gluten free, dairy free edition, if you need it. And if you want to get organized, our undated planner right here with lots of checklists to get you organized. Okay. Um, also, guys, our um, How to Get Organized and Clean Your House ebook set is 50% off right now. Also, um, and those books are pretty good. Yep. Hasty Contemplation. Thanks so much. I really need this. You read my mind. You're welcome. Cindy, got my lawn and leaf bags ready. One room to go. Let's do this. Good job. Go, go for it. Very good. Jay, no more. I need to tackle a closet of clothes. Good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my friend the other day, she texted me after we were done and she's like, guess what? I got rid of three bags of clothes out of my closet for the thrift store, found two more bags of clothes to go to the thrift store. And I think she said she dumped one bag of trash. I think if I remember right. When you're doing so, the clothes, guys, think about this. If you've got if you're 60 years old and you have your bikini that you wore when you were 20 years old, saving it, thinking someday you might wear it again, I don't think so. It's not going to happen. Toss it. If, you, if you've got uh, pre-baby clothes before you had your babies and you think you're going to be wearing these and it's 10 years after your babies have been born, you know, toss them. Get rid of this stuff that you can't wear and that's too, you know, they're going to be, they're out of style. By the time you fit back into these things, 10 years later, they're going to be out of style. Be ruthless. Just get rid of them. Don't save anything like that. 
Um, okay, next one. Tanya says it's looking great so far. Good work. Thank you. And my friend has been working really, really hard. As a matter of fact, I left today and I said, well, you can go ahead and quit. I said, you've done plenty for today. And she's like, nope, I think I'm going to keep going. So she is definitely motivated. I have, and I have been working. really impressed with her attitude because yeah. what people don't realize, attitude is probably about 80%, 90% of it. Once you get the attitude right for this, you, you'll you just tear into it and go for it. If you're to the point where you're standing there and you're holding up a potato peeler and you have four other potato peelers and you're spending 10 minutes trying to decide if you should throw that one potato peeler away or not, you're not ready yet. When you get ready, you're going to say, just toss them, you know, yep. just toss them. If you guys would give us a thumbs up if you are loving this video, we would really appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Nancy says it's a big improvement. Thank you. Jim says, next batch, Mike. I have a cousin who was featured on the hoarding show. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> she did a great job with it. It was an emotional and mental situation for her. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of times it is. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim, how long does it take to clean out the average size of the room full of stuff? So I would say if you have two people working on it, a full two days, mm -hmm. possibly three days. I would say one to two days, the first day getting everything decluttered and out, the second day getting everything put back and in its proper spot, and then the third day if you're going to decorate or paint or anything Organizing like that, a little get bit, it organized. Yeah. Now, the painting and that might have to go before you put everything back, of course, but I'm just saying it just depends. She's not going to paint right now. Um, right now she's, her big goal is just to get everything, um, uh, decluttered. Uh, the next one is Jay no more. I had someone interested in my instruments and still in my living room. Don't trust marketplace around here with certain people shipped not too far away. Ready for a trip to a pawn shop to be rid of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Listen, in our organizing articles on our website, we always say, just dump it. And people always get so mad. Well, you shouldn't just dump it. Listen, if you cannot easily get it to a thrift store or get it sold, you throw it away. Mm -hmm. Throw it away. It is not doing you any good to keep having that hang over your head all the time, thinking I'm going to sell it someday. Maybe in six months I'll sell it. Stop. Just stop. It's fine if you can get it to the thrift store or get it sold or whatever. I, but if you can't do that, you need to make it go away. I don't think people realize what stress just knowing in the back of your mind that that stuff is there. Yeah. It hangs on you just like a, a leech and it just grows in your mind. And so we worry so much about our physical being. We're not going to eat this. We're not going to have this. And I'm on this diet. And then I'm, we want our physical being. We go insane with stuff, taking care of our physical being. We'll spend a ton of money on special foods and stuff for our physical being. But mentally, we're destroying ourselves. You really are. And by you're, you're wasting your energy, your stress level by saving onto that thing. Just get rid of it. You know, I was thinking the other day, a lot of people say, I don't want to get rid of it because I spent a lot of money on this. Well, you'll go and buy a coffee for $8. You'll go out to dinner for $40 without thinking anything about it. And that's something that just goes right down the toilet and you think nothing of it, but you're clinging to this item that's maybe you paid $50 for or the same amount you went out, paid for to go out to dinner and you don't want to just get it out of your house. Money's already lost. It's gone. You already lost the yeah. money. So you need to just accept it and move on. I kept a sh salad shooter. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I did this. My husband went out and bought a sh salad shooter and I, it was the, it was the worst buy purchase we ever made. He ever made for me. And to help things go easier. I mean, I had to dig that thing out of the cabinet, put it together and then shoot, cut my lettuce in chunks to shoot it through the salad shooter. And then when I was done with that, I'd have to clean the whole thing up and put it back up in the cabinet, let it dry off, put it back in the cabinet. With my knife, I took me half, the, I took less time cutting the lettuce up with my life than do, knife than doing the salad shooter. I kept that silly thing for 15 years and I had no cabinet space hardly in my kitchen. And so I had other things that I needed more handy. The salad shooter was sitting in their place. 
And so I was just stressing myself out from one silly cat, a salad shooter. So get rid of that. But I did want to get rid of it. We paid good money for it. So get get rid of that stuff. I felt so much better once I got that thing out of the house. Um, let's see. Jason says, what Bible verses help the most when going through suffering? I mean, just Google Bible verses on suffering. Just mm -hmm. and whichever ones touch you the most, then just uh, just write those out on a card, a note card or print them out or whatever. Psalms is a good place to even start, you know, if you need to uh, yep. go to Psalms. And um, and GS says, I need ibuprofen just looking at that tar. Yeah, <laughs> I've had several doses today. I'm, I'm still I am very sore. I'm going to tell I'm not going to lie. I'm very sore. But let me tell you, the difference that we're making is and just phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, it's just phenomenal. And her son, his, he is just so excited. He told me many times, he said, thank you so much, Tar. He said, thank you, thank you. And so the thing is, you have to be ready to do it and you have to want to do it. And that's another thing. Do you realize what you're doing to your family by keeping this stuff, you know, and all that type of thing? Not her, because I know her situation mm -hmm. wasn't, but uh, I don't think you realize the stress you feel from the stuff goes over onto your kids and they feel that stress all the time. And you probably nag and holler at them more so because you have that stuff in the house and it's eaten on you, you know, type of thing. So think about your family. We never think about our family. We think our kids, it doesn't bother them to live in a pigsty. It does. And I'm always amazed at how, excited the kids get whenever I've gone in and cleaned somebody's stuff like that. And the kids are as much, if not more so excited than the moms. Yep. All right. Uh, Marilyn Monroe says she needs to make her hobbies fit in her container. If she has too much, she needs to decide what's more. I told her she is not allowed to buy one more watercolor supply. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good way to do it. And she's it's like, don't worry, I'm not. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, you really have to get to the point. And like, she's got a whole bunch of paints in the attic. And I was looking at those and I was like, you know what? I'll bet you half of those are dried out. Mm -hmm. And so that's some of the things we're going to be. Um, good. That's one of the things that we're going to be working on. You need so, to do that with your yeah. clothes too. Yeah. If you have a certain space, once that mm -hmm. space gets full, you need to get rid of something before you put something yeah. more in there. Uh, hoarding is on my dad's side. Tanya says my cousins had to clean my aunt's house several times. Yep. Chelsea's mm -hmm. mom said, or Ch yeah, Chelsea's mom says my mom went and tossed beta tapes or burned out light bulbs. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. that's a mental illness yeah. there. Yeah. That's, that's just ridiculous. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. Kimberly, we went to Walmart today to do a little bit of shopping. I was absolutely shocked. Some of the prices have gone up just since last month. I know mm -hmm. I have been totally shocked at some of the prices that are going up. They are going up now, guys. Yeah. It seems to be never ending and it's only going to get much worse. Yes. Trying to stay positive, but it's hard guys. That's what you need. Our dining and dining cookbook 35% off right now. Um, because it's going to get, it's going to get worse. It's nothing else for the leftover index. So you won't waste yeah. any of the food that you spent that money Easy on. Easy recipes, you know. basic foods. You already have a cheap food. So you're not using crazy ingredients. And get you in and out of the kitchen quick. It's 35% off right now for the print books. Kimberly, my attic space is very small and it's about, the, about that size because they had added a bathroom when they did some work on the house back in the 70s. They also expanded one of the bedrooms, I think. So there's pretty narrow space. It's basically a big closet. It's the last spot in my house I have to go through and clean out. Yep. Mm -hmm. Get it done. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Yeah. I saw a good portion of what you've already done and you've been doing a good job. Chrissy. So what do you do when, Oh, I got that one. Kimberly, my husband wasn't a hoarder, but he doesn't throw things away. He cleverly disguises things. <laughs> it's taking years for me to get the, get him to see the light. And I did it all just by example, when he realized how much nicer it was and how he felt better being in a decluttered space, he got on board. Yeah, that does help. I think that's what my husband thing was. He liked being in a clean, comfortable house. Mm -hmm. And so that's why he was more than willing to yeah. keep it that way yeah. when I was there. Um, let's see. Me Too says, is my friend working on it while I'm not there? Yes, she is. They are working on it while mm -hmm. I'm not there. 
And the boys, her husband apparently was collecting cars. So they have like, I think six. I think six. I don't know. Five or six. Regular cars. Big cars. Cars. <laughs> <laughs> on the front lawn or side lawn on the driveway. And um, I guess it depends. Yeah, it'd be the side side lawn. Yeah, on the side lawn. And um, the boys got two of those running today to sell. So they got the, so that was really good. They're really tearing going, so. into the place. Really yeah. good. Uh, Jim says, my wife has a lot of color clutter and I'm thinking about sending it to the Killams. Yeah, no. <laughs> Jim, if I'm you want to get looking the at my house, clutter time, and both I'm, sides. I'm going from your wife and Tara both. You don't want your wife and Tara both after you. <laughs> I am going through my clutter and I am going to get rid of it. Celia yeah. says, we were using things in our pantry and made your applesauce cake recipe. It was a hit. I love the pictures of the recipe cards and the cookbooks. It feels like you're both there baking with me. That's great. Oh, that's um, nice yeah. to know. So, like, here's my recipe card for the vanilla wafers right there. And that was one of my first recipes. And then here's my recipe for the brownies. And I don't know whose recipe. Who's, whose handwriting is that? That's mine. That's not your handwriting. That's Grandma Bessie's or something. That's Grandma Bessie's handwriting. Oh, that's Grandma Bessie's. Okay, yeah. So here's my my recipe card. Here's my great grandma's recipe card right there. And then, guys, we do have like full color pictures also. So if you're now, we don't have for every page. The book would be a thousand pages if well, it'd be bigger than that if we had it for every page. But like we tried to add as many. Um, well, oh, good grief. As I'm just, many pictures as we can um, in there to give you some ideas. So As she was looking through here, I just saw on one of the pages, we have ham salad, egg salad. We have like deviled eggs. We had uh, golden creamed eggs on toast. We have Easter's coming up. We have a whole slug of recipes to use up all the Easter leftovers in the just for Easter yeah. alone in there. Yeah. Uh, so 35% off right now, guys, for spring into savings. Uh, and today's the last day. Does a good sale go through tomorrow, Mike? 24 hours. Last 24 hours. We're done in 24 hours, guys. So the last 24 hours tomorrow night at 11.59 p.m. <laughs> on March 28th for all 2024, for those of you watching it in 10 years. Uh, Tanya says, my husband was a big pat rat. He had so much stuff when he passed. That is how our yearly sales got started. And we have done one every year since 2020 or no, since, tw since 2009. Mm -hmm. Wow. Sonia, I love volume one. Oh, we got that one. Nancy, absolutely. Some things you just have to learn to deal with. Everyone has issues to deal with it. Yes. You know, we got all this. Mm -hmm. I've got ADD. I've got Asperger's. I've got autism. I've got whatever illnesses. Listen, that's fine. But just figure out how you're going to deal with it yeah, and how you're going to compensate for it mm -hmm. and do it. I'm left-handed so, and I find a lot of things I can't do that are uncomfortable for me because I'm left-handed. Well, I figured out how to use my right hand and my left hand in different ways. I don't go around expecting them to change all the products in the world to accommodate my left hand. It would be nice, but I don't do that. And that that goes true with like the all the diets that and the people are on now. You know, they they can't have uh, gluten, they can't have milk, they can't have eggs. I'm diabetic. I'm a vegan. That's fine. But we have everybody that wants us to make a special cookbook for their special need. No, what you need to do is take a basic cookbook like ours and adapt the recipes yourself. Figure out how to adapt them. Learn what you can and cannot eat and then adapt the re recipes. My grandma, she was a diabetic all her life and she never expected anybody to give her diabetic recipes or anything. She, she'd go to people's homes. You'd never know to eat dinner and you'd never know that she was a diabetic. And so she just had learned to adapt her problem or whatever you want to call it. We're not supposed to call them problems nowadays, are we? No, whatever you call it. Well, she just learned to deal with people back then. And like the generation before me and part of my generation, we learned to just. So you've got this thing. You figure out what can I do to work with it the best that I can. 
Okay. Um, next, sorry guys, my I listed a whole bunch of things on Facebook Marketplace for my friend, so I'm having to deal with that while we're doing this, so she can get it gone, so we have more space tomorrow <laughs> to get more stuff done. Jim says we just need a dumpster to help us. Then rent the dumpster. Seriously, for the hundred dollars for him or for you? For him. Oh, <laughs> but seriously, for a hundred dollars. Yeah. Rent won't, the dust dumpster, that make take your life spring better. break, mm -hmm. throw it in there and be done with it. It's probably the best hundred bucks you'll ever, spend, you'll ever spend, but don't let that be an excuse. Just make sure your trash can, make your goal is that your trash is full every single week with stuff you're getting rid of. A lot of people say, well, I need a dumpster, so there's nothing I can do. And their trash is half full every week. Make sure it's full and get going. And so just keep yourself motivated and, and just keep yourself going. It's really funny when it comes to cleaning a house, people don't want to spend the money to have their house clean or to get it cleaned or whatever. And I've never been able to understand that because you'll spend like hundreds of dollars to have a car fixed. If it's, so oh, you'll spend on. more than that you'll a month just eating out. How much do you spend to get your car washed? You know, how much do you spend to get your car washed? But you don't want to spend any of that money on cleaning your house. Mm -hmm. So just go for it and take that money and it'll yeah. relieve a lot of stress. Send me the next one's Mike. Bounty in the Badlands says, I wouldn't wear a bikini after 30, 35 years. I love keep no kidding. I wouldn't. Either. Giant says she's declared everything except for her chocolate stash. That is good. <laughs> Way to go. Unless you're overweight, then that's not good. But <laughs> I started to bring my trash can tonight to show you guys because Tara was mentioning the other night about have a trash can everywhere that you know where you need a trash can if you see a pile of snack papers on this table or a pile of this over there that's where the trash can needs to go well by my chair my sewing chair I have a sewing uh, trash can there and to put stuff in because that's where I sit all the time well i took a picture to send to Ellie the other day because the whole thing was full of nothing but candy wrappers. And I took the picture and sent it to her. And I said, my name is Nan am I, and I'm a chocolate just to show her that one trash can full of candy wrappers. So you keep that chocolate. <laughs> um, and this is not advice from Tara. <laughs> uh, uh, can't the trash can go under the floor, under the desk? Um, no. Because that's an extra step he's going to have to take to go around the desk to dump the mail. So it's going to sit at the end of the desk. The filing cabinet is going away, though, and it's not going to be in the way. You literally want your mail here and your trash can right underneath. So you just have to dump straight down. If he had to walk around the side of the desk to go put it under. She means straight down the side of the desk. It looked like it. She it said looked... under the desk. Oh, no, oh, I no. See. you yeah. don't want to do that. And we're going to put another trash probably for her under the desk for when she's sitting at yeah. the desk. So she doesn't have to go back around again. So you have to have but... it where that person's just going to drop it because wherever you see piles dropped in the living room, in your bedroom, and my vanity where I do my makeup and everything, I have a small trash can right there, on, you know, where I can just drop everything in there because if anybody especially kids and a husband have to get up and walk the trash to someplace or even take two steps they're not going to do it okay so everybody's talking about the cost of dumpsters uh christine says my neighbor had a dumpster for cleaning it was 150 to drop it off and pick it up but 800 dollars after they weighed it listen okay that's a lot it was only like 100 bucks in colorado that's what i'm quoting but 800 dollars or almost a thousand dollars how many people spend a thousand dollars just eating out in two or three months? It is still definitely worth it, especially if you're eating out because you can't find your kitchen because you got so much junk everywhere. So you really have to calculate the cost and don't just say, well, well, a thousand dollars for a dumpster. Oh my goodness. That's not worth it. No, it might be worth it to spend a thousand dollars for a dumpster. So you need to think of these well, things. Well, and if that's not going to work for you, then let's go into the next option. You know, don't just not do anything because the one option you came up with is going to be too expensive. There's people that actually haul your stuff off for free. They like picking up stuff and they'll haul it off for free. You can call places like the DAV, the Disabled American Vets. They'll come and pick tons of stuff up. 
Uh, you know, all those types of things. You could get rid of a whole lot of stuff just doing those options. So just don't get so frustrated and say, I just, we can't do it because I can't afford to have a dumpster. I've never got rid of, I've gotten rid of tons of stuff before and I've never had to do a dumpster because I just would call people like that to come help it. Set, you would be amazed. Every day, sometimes I would set two or three things out on the curb by morning, it was always gone. Furniture, all Especially kinds of Especially if you put a price on it. <laughs> <laughs> My son's done this. I think Tara's done it. Just set that stuff out on the curb. Everybody doesn't want to put stuff outside because they're afraid it's going to be stolen. But just set it out there overnight and it'll be gone just by morning. put a morning. free sign on it. If somebody doesn't take it for free, put $20 on it and then they'll take it. I guarantee yeah. you. If they do it, they will. Yeah. It's the dumbest <laughs> thing ever. Chelsea's mom, I have, I don't have a ridiculous amount to do. My goal is one trash bag out per week. Very good. That's She's good. exceeding her goals. You go. Very good. Nancy loves, loves, loves the gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook. It's become her lifeline when my <laughs> husband became gluten sensitive. I was in a panic and got the cookbook and the rest is history. That is great. Kathy, now to motivate myself to clean out my clothes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do it. Five, ten clothes every day. Just dump. Get rid of them somehow, we thrift store, whatever. Go into the website and we've got like three or four articles on just decluttering. And we have lists, very simple, easy lists to follow of telling you exactly what to get rid of when you go to those closets, when you go to kids' toys. We list everything out and say, okay, and it's usually like two or three lines. So it's not complicated or hard. So go on the website and read some of those lists to help you, mm -hmm. you know, get motivated and and you know do it our local restore here in what yeah living on a dime.com is where you go to the website to get those articles just type in decluttering our local habitat for humanity restore here will come and pick up big pieces of furniture that are in good usable condition mm -hmm. um Let's see. Olympia says my biggest mess is in my office waiting for school year end. Yeah to end. Well, you, good news. It's only eight weeks away, but get started now. <laughs> Hippie chick says, I love this and how you're hemming and hawing over something. Yep. Amber, I love watching guys every day. Thank you. Thank you. Amy, I agree. Get rid of it. Um, Olympia, what does the sign be behind Tar say? It says I kiss better than I cook, <laughs> which is not true, but hey, or I don't know, dear, which is it? Do I kiss better than I cook? Oh. <laughs> tough choice. Tough choice. <laughs> tough choice. Amy. I'll take the kissing over the cookies. Amy loves our planners. 20% off right now, guys, for our undated planners and our cookbooks. She doesn't like certain meats, so she will substitute. Good job. Oh, good. And uh, salad, just need a cutting board and a knife. Yeah, Bounty mm -hmm. in the Badlands. I kept one baby outfit from each of my kids, plus their handmade baby blankets. When my grandkids were born, they were gifted a special outfit. Yeah, and so she was going through her son's stuff because that was his nursery. The, the office now was his nursery. And I was like, I'm a horrible mother. I didn't keep any of their <laughs> shoes. <laughs> I think I kept one outfit from BJ and Ellie. I kept nothing from Dave and Jack. <laughs> I'm a horrible mother. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> I had a young man tell me one time, he was probably his middle 20s or something like that. And his mom had kept every single paper from school, every single everything. And he said, you know, I don't know why mom kept all that stuff. What am I supposed to do with that? He said, I don't care about that, which I found kind of amusing, you know. Yeah. So just keep, like she said, a two or three of some, like the outfits, and maybe two or three, five pictures from each school year, something like that. Don't keep everything. Just, you know, just a couple yeah. of things. Um. Peggy loves our videos. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm losing weight, but it's still going. Do I hang on to some of the smaller items I like and might fit into again? Or is it better to just clear it out? If you have a few outfits that you just really, really love, uh -huh. go ahead and keep them. It's fine. And they're classic style. Yeah, something mm -hmm. that will look good, but... And you're on your way. You're st you're losing weight and you're keeping yeah. it up and think you're going to get there. But if not, then just go ahead and get rid of it and mm -hmm. start over again at the thrift store. Sarah, my friend has super messy house like you showed the other day and I offered to help her. She said, nobody comes in my house. 
I don't know what to do for her. We work together and she told me she just sleeps and relaxes on weekends. I don't know. I could never sleep in, in the bed all that weekend. That is not your responsibility. Stop taking responsibility for something that's not yours. Period. That's her responsibility. Now, you can put the offer out and say, hey, if you ever want to declutter and clean, just give me a call. I'm happy to help you. But that is not your responsibility to take to. on. She has to make the decision to go ahead and want to do that. Yeah, because you won't get any place uh -uh. fast if you... Chrissy, if I clean out my clothes, I have to get rid of it that day or it's still... Or it will sit there too long. Yep. If you can, you, that's great. You know, I was going to tell you guys, when you're cleaning out a room and you've got bags of trash or stuff that you're going to get rid... Take someplace or get rid of, you know, out of... The minute you get that gathered up in the room in that bag, set it outside the doorway. Don't leave it sitting in the room. Set it outside of the doorway. That box of stuff in that room that you're going to get rid of, <coughs> set it outside the doorway. Then as soon as you get done with the room, haul it all out to the trash or the car and get it put in there. Because psychologically, removing all that stuff from the room you're working on makes you feel like you're getting accomplishing something. Then the boxes of stuff that you've made up your mind you want to get rid of, you've got to get them in the car and get rid of them as soon as you can the next day or whenever you're going into town right away. Keep them in the, locked in the trunk or something because you, you don't want to be picking stuff out of it. If it's sitting out there in the open living room where you can see it, you're going to start, well, maybe I do want that. No. Take it and get it away mm -hmm. as fast as you can. Yeah. Um, Janet says, I clean my closet out twice a year and just get rid of the stuff. I'm not going. That's what I do. I, I do twice a year. Seasonal. Mm -hmm. I do everybody's closets twice a year, usually December or I mean, usually November and June is when I do it because we have kids with birthdays in June and November. So I just got in the habit of right before their birthday going through everything so they have room for the new presents. That's motivation for them mm -hmm. to have room for the new presents when they do it. And then for Mike and I, I do the same thing. Yeah, I was going to say, do it with their toys, you know, twice a year or three times a year. And I was, I wrote a thing, one of the articles on Living on a Dime that I was telling you about on decluttering. I wrote a story on there I'd forgotten about. I forget which one it was. It may have been BJ. But kids are really how do I want to say they're more willing than you think because I was helping him clean out his room one time and he went and he said, Nan, this doesn't fit me. And he tossed it. And he said, I don't like this anymore and tossed a certain toy. He said, this thing's broken. I don't need to keep it. I find it's the parents that are it usually is. the problem. And he was just, I thought I'd have to struggle with him to get rid of some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But just like your friend's son said, you know, he didn't want yeah. all those toys. I find a, uh, I, as a matter of fact, every single person I've helped with their house, it has been the parents that mm -hmm. are the problem. Oh, but that's your cute little sock from when you were born. He's like, Mom, I don't care. I wear a size 13 now. Keep one so two, one pair of socks and leave the rest and make yourself a little memory box. That's fine. But one little memory box. You don't need a pair of shoes from every stage of their life. It's like, my goodness, people. Uh, uh um kathy says we hello kathy we cleaned out our whole attic and that feels great doesn't it i know mm -hmm. by the way your emergency kit is still sitting by my car for my to-go thing ready to go <laughs> cindy nearest thrift stores over 40 miles round trip my dumpster is 60 feet foot round trip dumpster for the win but i feel it feel it close to pick up dates so i don't second guess and throw away my yes decisions. yep and uh, Diana loves the coleslaw or dining on a dime cookbook right there. I think that's grandma's recipe. Kimberly, I have rubbed the skin off my hands today, trying to get built up soap scum off my shower tiles. My husband's ready to replace the missing caulk. So I was trying to get rid of the walls real clean and I have scrubbed them and I have used vinegar and scrubbing bubbles. I just can't get them clean. What should I do? Go get a product called the works mm -hmm. W O R K S that will get it off. Go get a pro and spray it on there and let it sit for, I don't know. I don't know what the directions say exactly. It's like two or three minutes or something, but put it on there and let it sit and that will dissolve it. And another thing after he gets the caulking in, if possible, try to keep up on keeping the shower cleaned on a real regular basis so you don't have that hard much of a buildup, you know, uh, sometimes you got to just keep this stuff clean. Yep. 
more often. Joanna, when I moved to downsize, I rented a dumpster and threw away the stuff I had not used in six months. So it felt so refreshed. Very mm -hmm. good. Can you send me the next one, Mike's Diana? Do you have a lasagna recipe in our Dining on a Dime cookbook? I couldn't find it today. No, we don't. Oh, you know we don't? why? Because lasagna is not cheap. Oh, that's right. We and do mom does not make real lasagna. <laughs> I don't. So I knew everybody would holler because it's not real lasagna. So we um, we did not put it in easy, there. I make easy lasagna. We don't have it in there because by the time you buy the ricotta, by the time you buy the mozzarella, by the time you buy all this and that, it's just super expensive. Yeah, so, I don't make it that fancy. Um, Patsy, I made your sloppy joes for the grandkids tonight. They were delicious. Yep. Mm. Super easy recipes. My other YouTube channel, you can find how to make it there. And the West recipe is at livingonadime.com. Dana, my husband calls me queen of clever clutter and avalanche causer, but I'm working on it. Slow but sure. Yep. Just Very keep going. Very good. good. Keep job. going. Jim says they are working on decluttering, but it's a slow process. We need to speed, up, speed it up. So here's what you do. Set a goal for yourself. Today, we're cleaning off the couch. Get the couch cleaned off. Today, we are cleaning off the kitchen table. Get the kitchen, excuse me, kitchen table cleaned up. Today, we're cleaning the three end tables in the living room. Get them cleaned up. Then you'll start seeing quicker progress when you start seeing more flat surfaces. And mm -hmm. don't go and put stuff back on the flat surfaces. Horizontal surfaces are the worst. So, and so have as few as possible in your house. Bounty in the Badlands, I declutter by farm seasons, calving right now. Calf supplies are sort of everywhere. We need them in May. They will be seriously scrutinized, reorganized. But well, yeah, you kind of got to do that. You do have to go in seasons. Mm -hmm. um, Tina says, I'm left-handed. Also, those bread ties are mean. <laughs> it's the craziest things that you never think of that's hard to do i was trying to use my butter the and the all butter knives i love the cute little butter knives and but they cut wrong they have a fancy thing on the top of them and then the cutting thing on the bottom well they're made for people to hold in the right hand and cut and if i hold it the other way it's uh, mm -hmm. upside down. The fancy part is what you cut with. So, uh, yeah, there's yeah. lots of things people that aren't left-handed don't realize. Laura, I need to speed up, too. I'm a teacher, tired, but I know the clutter will only contribute to my fatigue. Yes. Now, here's the thing. My friend is a teacher also, and this is a problem because <laughs> she keeps saying, well, I need to take this to school, and I need to take this to school. And I'm like, she said, but I don't have room at school right now. I'm like, you don't have room in your house right now. And so then there was this one thing, and she was like, Oh, well, I need that, but I can't use that till next year. I'm like, okay, this is actually the only time I've really had to get onto her. But I was like, no, I said, if you have to wait till next year, you need to get rid of it now because there's no reason for you to be cluttering up your house with something for school that you don't have room for now. But I might have a wall. I don't care. If you have to leave it for a year or even six months and you can't use it now or get it put up and put into place, it needs to be going away. Well, and the only and other so, thing you could do yeah. for something like that is get a small cabinet and fit everything in there like you with your craft stuff. Just a small area. And if you're going to have a lot of stuff for your work or something that you need... And once that's full, yeah, hers are full. She's already yeah. taken like five boxes. Yeah. School, so once so she's that's full, full yeah. you don't put anything more, you know, you yeah. have to just let it go. And one thing about being teachers, I know it's exhausting. I know you're tired. Uh, and a lot of times you want to kind of put it off till summer months or this vacation or that. And if you find yourself not getting it done during those vacation times that you think you will, what you'll have to start doing is just force yourself to spend an hour every week or something doing a little section, you know, just do 15 minutes a day. Yeah. Be I don't care how tired you are. You can do 15 minutes after work every day. Yeah, you can. And if you can't do that, you need to start eliminating some things from your life. Really? If you can't take 15 minutes to keep your house up every day, you need to be eliminating some things because it's important. See, yeah. we always shove our house and its needs off to the last, uh, you know, if I have time, I'll get that done. I've got to do all this other stuff first. Our homes really should become first over anything. And I don't think you, especially nowadays, but it's always been true. I don't think you realize 
what a sanctuary your home needs to be for your family. They have to have some place they can come home to or a place to come to at the end of the day, whether it's from work or school, even for yourself, to come home to de-stress. That's why everything's just going crazy. You have sports after school. You're running around doing this, this activity, that activity. And nobody's realizing they need to be home, especially younger kids. Home is their whole world. Yeah, they go to school, but the important thing to them is mom and dad and their home. And you're leaving it the, the place they need the most. You're leaving it at the last thing to do to take care of. Start giving it a little bit more priority. We're putting it down too far down on the list of priorities. You need to be proud of it because it helps your family way more than you ever dreamed. I remember, what, oh, was it Ellie or you? But I've had the kids where we've redone the room, you know, after it was totally cluttered and they'll come in and say, oh, mom. And it's just like, there's just like this breathing and relaxing when they see this fixed up room that everything's straightened and organized that had been a mess before. The kids react to this a whole lot more than you realize. Um, Kathy says, I've rented a U-Haul truck and hauled stuff off there. Good. That's yep. a good idea. Chelsea's mom says the wind took off the greenhouse cover. This week's trash is from the yard. Oh man. Dana, I got all three of our cookbooks. Thank you. 35% oh, off you. right now. And especially the planner. It's the best planner she's ever owned. Thank <laughs> you. I'm telling you, it's darn tootin' good. It'll get you organized. Bethany, I have your 20th anniversary edition cookbook. What is the difference between the one and the other ones you're showing on sale? So the 20th anniversary edition, this one has um, 40 more recipes, right, Mike? Or was that the 20th anniversary that we put them in? We started the 20th anniversary. Okay, so the 20th anniversary and the red one is the same, but this one is totally different. So volume two is where you would need to start. Finding a way, we have the gluten-free Dairy-free, egg-free in our family and slew sensitivities. We definitely mm. have to adapt things. Agree, your cookbooks are great for that. Thank you. Deb says, I paid $300 for a dumpster and that was three years ago. Yeah, I think it just varies all over the place Where you on the price of what it is. Because mm. in Colorado, it was like my neighbor rented one. It was like 100, 150 bucks. It wasn't hardly anything. Mm. Um, and that may have, now that I say that, that may have not been without weighing it. So, you know, that could be it. Pam, we are cleaning out the last of mom's condos. She died. 98, all the stuff we moved in there is still in the garage attic 20 years later. Yep. Kimberly mm. cleaned out. And listen, you don't have to help these people move this stuff. If people are hoarders and they want you to move all their hoard. I had this issue with my aunt is a hoarder. And you guys have heard this. If you haven't heard it, you can go back and watch the whole story on the episode where when your estranged dad leaves in 20 or 2020 uh, dies. I mean, not leaves when your estranged dad dies. <laughs> um, but my aunt um, wanted me to come help her move from her abusive husband. I mean, we were moving all kinds of just And she's crap. physically capable and everything. I mean, it was just junk. And... Um, I should have known better. I have since then learned my lesson, but I went and helped her and then come to find out later, she flat out lied to me. Well, listen, if you're a family member, even if it's your parents, you do not have to move that stuff. They, if they want it that badly, I don't care if they're 90 years old. They can hire someone to move it if they want it that Her badly. Mom died. No, I know, oh. but I mean, I'm saying if, well, she was 98, so she would have been 78. I don't care if they're 78 years old moving that stuff. They can hire someone to come in and move it, but you have to stand your ground and say, no, I'm not going to do that. And so that's where boundaries come in, and you need to stand up and have some good boundaries and say, nope this is your mess. This is your problem. It's not on me to take care of this. So you need to stand well, up and do that. It's, it's part in the attitude too. You know, a lot of times like Tara's aunt just kind of expected Tara to do that for her. And she could have almost done it by herself, 
but uh, she didn't put forth any effort. She didn't try to pack up any boxes, really. Didn't try anything. to declutter anything. She didn't get rid of anything. Even before Tara arrived there, she didn't have anything. She wasn't doing anything to help herself. And so you have to kind of figure out, is this person you know, just taking advantage of me or are they really incapable and need help? You know, you kind of judge that yourself. Um, well, and even if they're incapable and they need help, it they can pay for it. If, if yeah, this has been a lifelong them, yeah, problem, they they're can, just being rebellious yeah. and not but that goes along with That goes so. along with the attitude type thing. Um, Kimberly says, I cleaned out the whole basement that way every weekend. We went down there and filled up a couple garbage bags and it went out that week. And then the next weekend we went down and did more. Within a month, the whole basement was cleaned out. Yep. Very good. Jim, throwing away junk mail daily is a great tip. Yes. If yes. you would just throw away the trash in your house, it's amazing what you can just, mm -hmm. and broken things. Don't keep broken pieces of stuff. And once you get this done... If you're sitting in the living room and you've got the kids have a package of cookies there or candy wrappers or chip bags and an empty pop bottle or something can or whatever there every evening when you guys get ready to go to bed, there's no reason each person can't pick up their own trash mm -hmm. and take it in on their way to bed and put it in the trash can. If you don't have one in the living room or something or you have and extra be considerate of each other. I will take Mike's plate when he's yeah. done and he's sitting in the recliner and I'm getting up to go to the kitchen. I'll pick up his plate and take it. He'll take my plate mm -hmm. if or cup or whatever. We don't really eat in the living room, but, um, you know, our cup or whatever. Or if we have a bowl of ice cream or we used to have a bowl of ice cream or whatever, he would take my bowl and into the kitchen sink or put it straight into the dishwasher. If we're all at the kitchen table sitting and he gets up to go get a glass of water and we're done eating, he'll take my plate and his, be considerate of each other. Some of this is just basic respect. Mm -hmm. My goodness, have some respect for your family. Love your kids enough to not live in a pigsty and have them embarrassed. This is just basic love and respect. And when you have that, then everything else starts to fall into place. And I know some people say, well, my family just wouldn't do that. They just keep messing up. But you'd be surprised. I found this out when we were remodeling our home. My house, before we started remodeling, we would keep it. The kids would put their pajamas under their pillow in the morning. They'd pick up their to toys in the evening, different things like that that we usually did. Well, the minute we tore the house apart and had everything in a shambles remodeling, I noticed a weird thing with my husband and the kids. They started just dumping their clothes in the bedroom and we weren't even remodeling the bedroom. They started not picking up things. And I'm thinking, what is going on here? Because they were we were living in such chaos and mess, they weren't just doing their usual trying to keep things neat. If you have everything neat and tidy, one thing that's out of place is so obvious to everybody they don't want to leave it there. They will automatically, yeah. a lot of times, pick it up. Okay, Mike, can you get on real quick and show, tell everybody what's going on with the extra commercials and iPads and iPhones? Just so we're going to do that real quick, Mike. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, hmm, I don't hear me. That's odd. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I, I just looked on, I checked into it, and apparently it doesn't, a certain number of commercials are unavoidable. Like YouTube will put them on whether we want them or not. Uh, but if you're getting them like every five minutes and stuff like that, and it sends you back to the beginning of the video, then that is uh, an issue where they are saying that it's an issue of the app that you're watching it on needs to be updated. So if you're watching it on a, a phone, then you need to find out like how to update the YouTube app on your phone. You might have to Google that. If you're watching it on a browser like Chrome or Firefox or something, then you need to go in there and update the browser. And that's what's causing that for people that are having that problem. Okay. Did you get it all? Okay. The next one is um, Cindy says the six cubic yard dumpster is $30 a month here in rural Kansas. Best investment ever. Yep. There you go. Mm -hmm. Um, Amy, how do you get rid of old paint and appliances? So there's a lot of hazardous waste places. A lot of dump um, dumps will have a hazardous waste. Just call them and ask them, what do I do with my hazardous waste? And they will tell you at your local dump. The same thing with appliances. They will, um, 
take some, but sometimes you have to take them to a special place so they can like take the Freon and stuff like that out of them. So Jim says too much stuff is a rich country type problem. Yep. Can yeah. you say my next one, Mike? Megan says, what if my problem is I keep reorganizing? I just started canning as a hobby and have over 500 jars and went overboard with pots and supplies. Nothing ingredients is working and I pull everything out and my kitchen is unusable for two days every week. Well, then your kitchen's unusable for two days a week. I mean, but you just get it back into shape for the other five days. That's but it sounds like you need to get rid of some stuff. Yeah. That's, that's part of why I quit canning, you know, because it does take a little bit of effort to clean up the kitchen afterwards and that type of thing. But you do sound like you have too much stuff. Uh, and I would cut back, you know, try to get rid of it. Yeah. Especially this time of year would be a good summer is a good time to get rid of canning stuff, too, because yeah. people are having their gardens. And Chrissy, everything. I get rid of a bunch of music boxes. My kids said they didn't want when I die. Yes. Mm -hmm. Captain Unconventional says, I still have negatives with my picture. Should I get rid of them? Yes. Just dump them. Nancy, Amy Harden, two to four, or she's telling Amy, two to four years, two to four times a year, we have two areas that accept our leftover paint, electronics, and one to two other times they accept old prescriptions. Yep. Um, In Balance says... She loves you. Big <laughs> love from Israel. Oh, Bound thank you. Bounding Badline says we, we have to haul our own trash to the dump station, so we own our own dumpster. Very good. We love you guys in Israel. We pray for you guys all the time. We do. We really do. Yep. Melissa says the best brownies ever. Dining on a dime cookbook right there. Yes, they are. My depends on which ones, but the regular ones are my ho my high school home ed class. My first recipe ever. Jay No More says my mother in law was friends with a hoarder house storage unit car stuff. She stayed at my mother in law's a lot. Only could get to her couch to sleep. There was so much junk. Yeah, her mother should your mother should not have let her do that because sometimes these people need to have their own pain. They need to be in pain enough to realize what they have done. It's a form of enabling. Yeah, it's enabling. Mm -hmm. It's 100% enabling. And your mm -hmm. mother was codependent on her because she needed her to feel good that she was helping her. Sorry, it's enabling 100%. It's just the cycle is what's ha what happened. Jim, one time I was down to one pair of pants that fit me well. My wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, talked to me to get a few more pairs of pants. Well, please, yeah, that might be a good, <laughs> that's a good idea. We thank, tell your wife we thank you. We don't need that vision in our head. <laughs> Uh, Madonna says, if you can't sell it, put it out front with a free sign. You'll be amazed how quickly it will disappear. And if it doesn't disappear with a free sign, put $20 on it and it will disappear. Really I'm funny. not kidding. Yeah. I mean, we laugh, but I don't know how many times that has mm -hmm. happened to us. It's so well, funny. You know what? It's funny going to garage sales. They always have a free box there. And I notice people kind of walk along and they look in the free box, but then they keep going at the garage me, I go the free box first thing and pick something out of the free box, you know, but everybody else kind of like, you know, do I take it or not? So I find that really amusing then. Yep. And another thing about um, dried and old, or old paint, what you guys don't realize is it's hazardous waste when it's liquid, but if you let it dry yeah. out, then it's trash. So you can just dry it out, leave the lid off and let it dry for several days or weeks or whatever. And then it won't be hazardous weight anymore. Um, Laura, advice for decluttering while fighting extreme fatigue. Yeah, just do one drawer, one shelf, one trash bag every single day, every commercial, however you want to do it. But we call it commercial cleaning. Just go in. You would be amazed what you can do get done just watching a movie just in the commercials. You can get the washing machine loaded. You can get the dishwasher loaded. You can get the washing machine moved from the washer to the dryer. After that, the second half of the movie, you can finish um, folding the laundry on the couch while you're finishing the movie. So just do one thing all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Any plans for Easter? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
So <laughs> we're going to go to church, eat church, each brunch at the church. But no, we don't have anything planned for Easter. We don't have little tiny kids anymore to do the Easter egg. We used to do full-fledged, major, all-out Easter stuff. But now we don't have a little kids. And we've had a lot going on this this uh, this year. And so we may have company next week anyway. So Kimberly says, always went through the toys every October. And I told them it was to get ready for new Christmas toys. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good motivation. Do that before their birthdays and before Christmas. Go through the toys. Chrissy, my breakfast nook is nothing but a stuff collector. Then get rid of the breakfast nook and put in some shelves and make it some nice storage for your kitchen or something. If you're not going to use it as a breakfast nook, make it usable for what you need. If you're not going to use it for storage, it, would it be a good plant area? I mean, just think put of how you Put a nice little desk in yeah. there to keep your paperwork and stuff or something like that where you can do your paperwork. Yeah. Uh, Froze family, I'd be left-handed. Yes, I get that everything is on the wrong side. Yeah. <laughs> just Vicki. Okay, send me the last one, Mike. Just Vicki says our local mission store takes everything. They have an outlet for every single thing. Wow. That's great. Mm -hmm. Jim says, we used to rent a storage shed. We got it cleaned out, but a lot of things ended up in our house. You guys, you need to add up these storage sheds. Let's say yeah. you're paying $400 a month times 12 months. That's $4,800. That is the price of a used car. Two years is the price of a nice used car. Three years is the price of a really nice used car. Well, and if you've been storing this stuff That's a lot of money. for like two years, three years, four years, um, you know what? You probably aren't going to use this, most of the stuff that's in there. So it would pay for you to pay the expense of a dumpster to get rid of the stuff in there. And then you won't have the expense of the storage yep. shed too. You know, I don't know if that's your case, Jim, but you know, that yeah. type of thing. Oh, Rob! <laughs> um... Fran, I agree. That's a lot of cases. It's a control issue. My house is a lot less cluttered after my husband passed. We had always, he was always telling me how to clean and what I should keep. So I would go on strike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, it is a yeah. marriage thing. Jim, we have too many books. Yep. Get rid of them. Um, Jiggy, <laughs> Vicky. Oh, Jim. Poor Jim's really getting it tonight. <laughs> He's commenting. I yeah, give them away so somebody else will use them. Vicky says books are my downfall too. Well, get rid of them. <laughs> yeah, guys, you know, you you shouldn't. I know people that have kept their books. They're like my age, 60, 72, and they've got all the books they bought when they were going to the uni uh, college or whatever, and they've saved them. They never looked in them again. Don't keep the books. And you know what? Most towns have a library, especially we lived in a town of 400 people and it had a library. And so if you've got a library in your town, get rid of those books. What are you? It's, it's almost like a status symbol with some people having good books, you know, having books. It's like I'm really smart or, you know, it's it used to be a real big status symbol years ago because only rich people had books. And so. You don't need to do that. You shouldn't really be buying books. Go to the library. You'd be saving money. What, you know, how are you getting all these books too and spending money on them? And just go to the library. You can take them back. You don't have to store them. You're not, not spending money on them. I had a friend, she was really much into buying books. Uh, you know, off she had a book club thing or whatever. She just bought any book she heard that was good. She would spend the money and buy it. And I finally got her convinced to go to the library. She, and our library, uh, they would take and put the amount that you were saving by checking things out at the library instead of buying the book. Mm -hmm. And she, it was like the first time her and her husband went, she said she saved something like $1,050 that first time they went to check out books at the library. So, you know, think about this. Use your library and get rid of your books and let somebody else enjoy those books for a while. Um, Jane from the country says, we will not allow anyone in the family or friends to store stuff at their house. Yeah, me either. Mm -hmm. Nope. I'm sorry. I'm not responsible for your stuff. Tara, um, Tara kicked me out a week after I bought my you house. You better believe it. <laughs> um, Terry, I used to have a glass 
a cabinet of glasses that people could use and separate cabinet of glasses that no one could touch. I used to get so mad at the kids if they broke a glass. It, yeah, and it's a glass. And parents holler at their kids over a glass. Really? Mm -hmm. Kathy loves our cookbook. She has all three guys. So they're 35% off right now for our spring into savings sale. Easy recipes get you in and out of the kitchen quick with ingredients you already have. Super easy recipes is my recipe channel if you want to go see that or look at some of our older videos. Also, our undated planners, guys, 20% off. So, so grab some of those. And this is the last 24 hours. Uh, it ends tomorrow night. The sale ends tomorrow night. And um, that'll be it until later. Um, Jennifer, once you clean everything out, your life will be so much easier. When you get organized, the stress goes away. Yep. You know what? I have never had anybody that's gotten out of debt or that's decluttered their house come back a year or two later and say, I wish I hadn't done it. It's always totally the opposite of how freeing that makes you feel. I, that's why I keep, we try so hard to get people to do both of these things because you have no idea the pressure that it's putting on you. Rob says, move into a tiny house and you have no room for stuff. <laughs> yep. There you go. Uh, Amy says this weekend, hoping to fill more trash cans. You go girl. Very good. Just Vicki. I also have a Bible collection. <laughs> well, that's funny. <laughs> well, that's fine. If you actually use it, yeah. if you're using it, but if it's just sitting in there on the shelf, then Chelsea's mom asked my mom's sister to talk to her about hoarding and was told how horrible I was to force her to toss stuff. Mom ended up leaving the house to her. Then she realized I wasn't the bad guy. Yep. That'll mm -hmm. do it. Mama's house uh, is nine cups of flour for your baking mix. Correct. So I've been seeing six cups on other recipes with other ingredients being the same as you have. That's because my recipe is good. <laughs> um, yeah, it's fine. It, you can use less flour if yeah. you want. It doesn't change the mm -hmm. potency of the baking powder mm -hmm. or anything. So, Jane Moore, trash and broken stuff goes into the trash immediately. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jim says, happy Easter, everyone. And Ew. Illuminate says, how are you started plants doing? Not very good. <laughs> so, I need to get a, I think I need to get a shelf moved in with grow lights. When I planted them, I planted them on the last nice day before we had like five days of overcast or snow and they have started molding. So now I got to go figure something out, but I've been helping my friends. So I haven't had a chance to do that, but I got to get on that this weekend. Cause I really got to get stuff started now. Um, Jennifer, people need to stop overthinking it. Just get rid of it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, by the bedlands, my hubby and brother-in-law love to try and fix my broken appliances. I let them tear it apart, put it back together and then throw it in the trash. They <laughs> get a morning of entertainment. Hey, whatever works. <laughs> my goodness. Donna, I always clean up dishes. I was just cleaning dishes while listening to the slide. That is great. Mm -hmm. You'll get bugs if you don't get rid of dishes. Yep. And Terry's been dusting. Very good. Very good. You guys are going to yeah. roll. Hello, Shannon. Oh, Hello. Shannon. I could tell. I don't have my glasses and I can't see the words, but I could see it was Shannon. <laughs> Chelsea's mom, dad's aunt and uncle died in a house fire from bad combo of hoarding and space heater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I was telling my friends today. I said, this is a fire hazard. We really have to get this cleaned up. This is not good. That's why um, I talk about the kids and taking care of your family. I know that sounds harsh, that you, but you're, you need to take care of your kids. And part of that is getting the house clean. It really is. You have so many things. You have mold, you have bugs, you have rodents, you have the hazards of a fire. And for some reason, we just don't think of those things. And we're so worried about our kids adjusting socially, doing this at school or doing that. And we find time to do all these things but we don't find time for their safety at home. Um, okay. Uh, somebody said Trump is selling Bibles. What do we think about that? I don't know how to feel about it. So I have not heard about that yet, but if he is, that's a little weird. I mean, there's nothing wrong with him selling Bibles, but if you're a Christian and you're only buying it from Trump, just because Trump's selling it, I wouldn't, that's not something I would do. He's marketing them as God bless the USA Bibles. He's marketing them as God bless the USA Bibles. Okay. Yeah. I'm not okay with that. That's yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not okay with that. Yeah, it's one of those things though that yeah. it's not. I mean, if know, he's selling it to earn it, money because he needs it for his, for his stuff. 
Yeah. If, yeah, but if he's using it as a marketing thing to get money to pay for his bills and stuff? He's saying that America needs to pay more. I don't know the I don't know the details of what's yeah, actually so going really on, say. so I can't say for sure. But I don't know, seems a little strange to me, but okay. Amy says, as a firefighter, yes, it is a big problem. And um Vicky, just Vicky says, winter sowing gallon milk jugs, it's just a little terrarium. Yes, I have actually windows that I bought last fall that I'm going to put in my raised beds. And um, probably in about two weeks, I'm going to go ahead and get my spinach and lettuce all started. Because we can't plant here until minimum of May 14th, but it's actually closer to Memorial Day. Um, so Coffee Cup says, if Trump is using Bibles to for fundraising, that is Jesus turning over the tables. Yeah, if it's being used for fundraising, then that's that's where the problem comes in. But I don't know, guys. At this point, guys, things are so absolutely ridiculous. You're going to have to just you're just going to have to check it out go. and, and do your own discernment yeah. and your own conviction a little bit. You know, on all there's going to be so many little things like that. It's gotten to the point where there is just so much just pettiness and bickering and picking on people. Mm -hmm. Not that Trump shouldn't be selling. I'm not saying that, but you can't just dwell on all of this stuff and just dwell on all of these things all you the know, time. Just pray about a lot of this stuff. Different people are convicted of different things. And, and what's sin for one person isn't always a sin, you know, that, that are these gray areas like this. I'm not talking about the, you know, Ten Commandments and the main stuff that the Bible talks about. I'm talking about these gray areas. And you need to really just pray about it, know your Bible, and then allow God to lead you. We, you have got to get closer and closer to God and praying to Him so He can guide you and give you discernment. Pray for discernment. Pray for discernment for your children, your grandchildren, and your for yourself. That's what's happening. We're not thinking for ourselves, and we need to start praying for discernment and trying to figure that, learn this stuff, or, you know, a lot yep. ourselves. If you guys need a free Bible, we give away free Bibles. Um, Michael put a link in the description for you. If you can afford one, you can buy it because people have asked. But if you can't afford it, you could just use the coupon code that's on the page. Um, and um, yeah, so you can just do that if you if you need a Bible. Um, don't forget, our cookbooks are on sale for 35% off right now, guys. Our Spring into Saving Sale Volume 1 and Volume 2 start here with Volume 1 if you um, don't have any of them. Also, our gluten-free, dairy-free edition, if you're like me, gluten-free, dairy-free, yummy foods that doesn't taste like sand, you will love it. And our undated planner, 400 pages, 366 days. Visit us at livingonadime.com, and we will see you guys Love you guys. Bye-bye.